Hello again. Welcome to another Gong Ho Show. It's July 26, 2013. The title of this show is The Cancer on American Democracy. Uh, and the cancer is Donald Trump. I, I've been over this area now, for now maybe five years, been talking about this. But it seems now more than ever it's important because it's evident that Donald Trump's going to run for our presidency again, and he has to be stopped. All right. What I want you to understand is that I know a lot about uh, Donald Trump and uh, his connections to the Russians, and I learned it by being a criminal defense attorney. I want you to believe what I'm going to say to you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I was born in Kings County Hospital. I was Brooklyn, New York during the Second World War. My dad was in the Army at the time. But I was raised in Nassau County. And uh, I graduated from Massapequa High School. Then I went to Hofstra University, graduated. Then I went right into the Marine Corps, enlisted in 1966. Uh, I became an officer, an infantry officer. I volunteered for Vietnam. I went to Nam. It was a difficult tour, combat tour. And I got out of the Marine Corps because I didn't want to go back to Vietnam because I thought I could never survive another tour. So I went right into law school. And I graduated law school in 1973. And I started criminal defense attorney as a criminal defense attorney from then until I retired. So I've had a lot of experience and a lot of time in the federal courts and in the state courts. And this is a story that goes back a long time and it's ongoing right now because Trump is involved and people that were involved back then are still involved and interfering in our lives, our democracy. All right. For me, um, it started on a big mob case. It was USA versus Frank Copa et al. There were 19 people involved, uh, indicted, excuse me. And yes, some of them were in the mafia, in the Italian mafia, and some of them were in the Russian mafia. I had defendant number three, Danny Persico Jr., the Colombo slash Persico family. Uh, that was my legal involvement. Uh, this is part of the file um, USA versus Frank Copa at all. Third defendant was Danny Persico Jr. This is just part of the file. So that's my first involvement legally. That case um, was a really big case. Uh, they had a big press conference. I'm talking about Department of Justice, FBI, uh, New York, NYPD. Uh, they were alleging uh, that the mob had infiltrated Wall Street uh, big time. What, what, the, what the mob had done is they had set up a phony brokerage or maybe several, and they were uh, bilking people with this phony brokerage. They were uh, doing what they call a pump and dump uh, scam. So they were able to steal, in this case, they said it was $44 million, but I think it was a lot more. So it was a very big case. All right, that's where I come in. That's in March 2000. The case went along for a couple of years, and everybody pled out, including my client, Danny Persico Jr. And everybody got a very lenient plea. Now, we didn't know then what, we, what I know now. Why did we get these such lenient pleas? Everybody was facing 20 years. It was a racketeering conspiracy case, and it just disappeared after over a couple of years. Uh, out of this big, these big charges. Uh, all right. My client took a plea to one illegal transaction 
He got a short sentence, all the serious charges, the conspiracy charges, the racketeering charges were dismissed. The whole case went away. That was the end of the case for me. My client went in in uh, 2002, came out, and that was the end of the case back in 2002 as far as I'm concerned. However, uh, fast forward, it's now 2018. And I'm watching, at that time, one of my favorite uh, commentators, Ari Melba, 2018. And he's talking, uh, well, he's having a special about what he says is Donald Trump's attorney, Michael Cohn. Now, I know something about Michael Cohn as far as being an attorney. He was really not Trump's attorney. He was an errand boy. He was a goon. I know who the real attorney was until just recently. It was a guy by the name of Jay Goldberg, who was a friend of mine, who wrote this book, The Courtroom is My Theater. He was the man behind Trump uh, since the late 90s when he represented him on his first divorce case. When he divorced, I think it was Ivanka for Mullis Staples or Maples. All right. So here is Harry Melbourne in 2018 talking about Mike, Michael Cohn, and he's also mentioning uh, another guy by the name of Felix Seda about how they had recently, actually during Trump's campaign, tried to make a business deal for Trump and the Russians to build a tower in Moscow. This really happened. I got proof of it. These two guys were trying to make a business deal for Donald Trump, the Trump Organization, with Russians to build a tower in Moscow while he was running for presidency. Harry Melville kept mentioning the name Felix, Felix Seder, and somehow it rang a bell. And I thought uh, maybe he was an informer on one of my cases. So I went down you know, into my cave, and sure enough, I found you know, I found the original file. I mean, this is just part of it. And sure enough, the guy he was talking about, Felix Seder, in 2018, was the, one of the informers on this big mob case in 2000. That means that he had been working <coughs> with the FBI and the Department of Justice for 20 years because he was flipped, and I have the, his agreement, he was flipped in 19, December 1998. He was flipped by attorneys, he was assistant United States attorneys in the Eastern District of New York. And this is incredible. Uh, the supervisor on the case, on the USA, Frank Copa, was a guy by the name of Andrew Weissman. He was the supervisor on the case. He was running that big case. In fact, he signed off on Felix Sater's cooperation agreement. He became a rat. He flipped, and he took a plea, and he cooperated with the FBI and the Department of Justice against the Italian mafia and the Russian mafia, and he, made, he helped him make this case. But he was a worse criminal uh, than them when it came to this case and other financial frauds. All right. So the evidence is, is that Felix Ada has been working with the FBI and the Department of Justice uh, for 20 years up, in 2000, up until 2018. So now I'm, getting, I'm interested. How is this guy still around? So I do an online search of Felix Ada, and I start to find out a lot of things about him. Yes, he's still around, and uh, I knew he took a plea in December 1998. I knew <clears throat> he wasn't sentenced until 2009, so that was like uh, 11 years after he took the plea. That's unusual, a very long time between the plea and the sentence. And I found out just by doing online research to start out that he went over to the Trump Tower in the early 2000s, say 2002, the Copa case was still pending. He's supposed to be a witness against these mob guys and these Russian guys. 
Meanwhile, he's over at the Trump Tower. He's in a business called Bayrock LLC. Uh, no one over there knows that he is a FBI informer. No one over there knows that he has pled guilty to racketeering conspiracy. And no, no one knows that before that he was convicted by jury trial for assault in the first degree and did time. The government agreed to keep all his convictions, everything he did secret. So he went over there, and guess what? He makes friends with Trump, and this is all true. And Bayrock, he takes over Bayrock, and he does business with the Trump Organization. And what do they do? Now, this is treason. It's not out there. I mean, it's not out there. That there's no one in the main media will tell you what I'm telling you now. And nobody in the, on cable will tell you this. Trump, the Trump Organization, and Bayrock laundered money from Russian oligarchs. These are, these are friends of Putin. Money that they stole from the Russian people, their businesses, their banks, whatever. Putin is in on it. They laundered close to a billion dollars, and they got away with it. No one's been ever been indicted for that laundering. So this all happened while Seder was working for the FBI and the Department of Justice, and I know firsthand that the federal judges involved in all the litigation protected Felix Seder. I know, because I went to court to try and disclose this with other attorneys. All right, come back up. So, and Andrew Weissman, He's on MSNBC TV several times a day. He knows that Felix Seda laundered money with Donald Trump. He knows all of this, and it was on his watch. And guess who else's watch it was on? Special counsel. That's Robert Swan Mueller. Okay. Mueller was appointed as FBI director I think it was in 2001, by Bush 43. He stayed on for 12 years. Obama kept him on for another two years. All this time, Felix Seder, through Bayrock, was doing business with the Trump Organization. They were committing crimes. They were, do they were committing fraud. They were doing money laundering. It all happened on Mueller's watch and Andrew Weissman's watch. They don't want this to come out because it would destroy so many people in the FBI, Department of Justice, and federal judges that kept a lid on this. It's all here. Everybody's afraid of it because so many people are involved. Look, Bush 43 had to know what was be going, going on. I mean, his director, his FBI director would tell him, oh, by the way, we have an asset in Trump Tower. We have an FBI informer in Trump Tower. Forget about the search warrants. We have an asset there that's doing business with Trump. We got Trump if we want him. No, you don't have Trump. He's got you. He's got all of you. All right. This is how bad it is. You must agree with me. <laughs> I had to learn the hard way. The most powerful mob in the world is our government. Our government. Because this corruption, this corruption of absolute power, is like it's all over. It's in the FBI. It's in the Department of Justice. It's in the federal courts. And the executives, the president, they know these things. They can't say anything about it because so many of the people they know are involved. And that includes Obama, too. He had to know this. His director would have told him, by the way, President, we have an asset in Trump Tower for a long time. He's our man. They all know. I know. They ignore me. All right. Since 2018, I've been trying to tell Harry Melba. I've told him over and over and over what's going on. He ignores me. I went to court in 2018. Here's how this happened. 
on my search online, uh, I found a, a writ of certiorari to the Supreme Court of the United States. And I started going through it, and the writ mentioned the Copa case, mentioned Felix Sater, the informer, it mentioned my client, Danny Persico Jr. Uh, it mentioned Bayrock. It mentioned all kinds of things. And what it turned out is there were two lawyers who were in federal court. They were trying to disclose all the things I'm telling you. They're trying to disclose what Felix Sater did with Donald Trump. And they were, well, one of them brought a, a civil RICO case against Bayrock and Sater, and that would involve Trump. And as soon as he did that in the federal court in Manhattan, the government came down like he was a major mafioso. They came down on him in every way they could. I'm talking about the FBI, Department of Justice, federal judges. And I knew the government was lying about what they were doing. What they were doing was trying to bring out what really happened. So I'm on the record already. I'm in the case. I know Felix Sater what he did. I come forward. I actually am in the record now. I provide an affidavit, and I just and I tell I tell the court, you know, Felix Aid and the government are lying to you. These lawyers are telling you the truth. I went to court, and guess what? They wouldn't let me testify. I went to federal court, Eastern District. I was in court with my own lawyer. I already had filed an affidavit. It's all there. I had already notarized the judge involved. There were two judges. By letter, it was in the record. I was there to testify against the government. They would not let me take the stand in America. The judge would not let me take the stand and treated the two lawyers, Fred Overlander and Rich Lerner, like they were big time drug dealers. She treated them with disdain, with contempt. I saw it all happen. And it's all sealed. Uh, gets worse. In 2018, it's common knowledge that Mueller used Felix Sater as a witness against Michael Cohen. It's out there. You know, how could that be? It's 20 years later, and they're still using this guy. Mueller is using him. How corrupt. How it doesn't get any worse than that. Oh, I guess it does. All right. Along the way, I found out the hard way that the government will recruit informants. Invariably, they're really bad people, big time drug dealers, uh, big time mafioso, big time spies. They flip them. They got something on them, they flipped them. And they send them out there. And guess what? These mafioso, like uh, Ray Scarpa, they do whatever they want, including killing people, robbing people, extortion, and it's called otherwise illegal activity. They're allowed to do it. And guys like Felix Sater, they go out and they commit fi financial crimes, otherwise illegal activity. No! The government is protecting them. They get away with it. Guys like, uh, what is it, uh, Bolger. What's the name? Bolger in, in Boston. He was a federal, a federal um, he was an FBI informer. He went out and did whatever he wanted. Whatever he wanted, including murders. They even framed, and the government, the FBI and Department of Justice, framed four innocent men for a murder that Bolger was involved in. Well, one of his men, they did this stuff. Everybody knows this. They got away with it. Well, you know, all right. Um, but this is what, <laughs> this is what's going on right now. Remember John Dean? John Dean said in the, during the water, water Watergate hearings, we have a cancer. There's a cancer, I told Nixon, we have a cancer on the presidency. He was referring to the president, Nixon. He was referring to the guys that he had working for him, Holderman and whatever, his cronies and the plumbers. He was referring to that. That was the cancer. And we have to 
cut that cancer out. Well, this is worse. The cancer is way beyond that. Absolutely, when Trump is there, it's in, in the presidency. But this cancer now is in the Department of Justice, the FBI, and in the federal judicial system. I mean, just look like, what's going on? And I, look, I'm telling you things, and when I tell you something, I've got the proof. I've got it. I, the government can't do anything to me. They destroyed those other lawyers, Fred Overlander and Rich Lerner. They destroyed them with their own prosecutors. Prosecutors, U.S. attorneys that would go to court and commit crimes to destroy them. They did it while I was involved. They completely ignored me, but they couldn't do anything to me. They can't say, Mr. Giannini, he filed an affidavit. Well, he libeled people. Then he goes out and he slanders people. No, my affidavit is there. They can't say that because it's the truth. But I watched these other lawyers be destroyed. It reminds me now, I just went to see the movie uh, Oppenheimer, how uh, he was destroyed by our government. And he was a decent person. Uh, they used him to create the atomic bomb. And then when he had some second, second thoughts about how it should be used, as it, and he didn't want it to be used again. That was it. He wanted it to be the last one that would stop all wars. No, our government wanted to go on and build the hydrogen bomb and build you know hundreds of bombs and thousands of bombs. He didn't want that. They didn't want him to say that, so what do they do to him? Completely discredit him, ruined him. And I think they even killed his girlfriend. He had a girlfriend uh, before he got married and he was seeing her while he was married. They killed her, the government killed her. They claim she committed suicide. Bullshit, they killed her. All right. So where do we go from here? Uh, what I'm telling you has to be known by people in the media, like Ari Melba, uh, like uh, Lawrence O'Donnell, Rachel Maddow, they know some of this. They know some of this. They will not use it. They are afraid. They know it involves a lot of people. And this is not like the Watergate. Remember, Watergate, Deep Throat, he was high up in the FBI, and he came forward, and he gave information to the media. That's not happening now. There's no one high up in the government uh, I'm saying that. It's going to come forward and say, look, I know what's going on. Well, then someone would say, how do you know? Because I was part of it. Because I'm part of it. And I don't like what's going on. No. They're all cowards. They're all afraid. This is our press. This is our politicians. They have to know. I'm not sure. I don't think they know as much as I know, because I'm in, on ground zero. I'm, I'm in. I know about Felix Seda. I have the documents. He's still out there. He was sentenced in 2009. When he was sentenced, think about this. They brought in a woman by the name of Leslie Caldwell to represent him at sentence only. Leslie Caldwell before she came to represent him at sentencing, she's now in private practice in 2009, was the third most powerful person in the Department of Justice across our land. They bring in her to represent him at sentencing. And they try to keep that secret. It's out there. I got it. They bring in her. And the sentence is what? It's illegal. And why is it illegal? Because Felix Seda confessed to stealing $44 million from you know, people that thought they were investing in legitimate deals, legitimate, legitimate stocks and bonds. He stole $44 million. Well, the law is passed by Congress 
if you plead guilty or you're found guilty of stealing money, well, first of all, the, alleged, the victims have to be notified right away that Felix Sater was arrested. The Mandatory Victim Restitution Act is law by Congress. Felix Sater gets arrested, you notify the victims. We got this guy. Now, they have a right to come to court. They have a right to know exactly what's going on with the money that was stolen from them because they have a right to seek restitution. Not here. Now, with Felix Sater, they completely ignored the law, and they sentenced him illegally. He gave back, well, this fine was $25,000. No probation, no time, no restitution. That's it. He walked away with everything he stole. He was treated like that. Everything was illegal. He's still out there. And right now, he's being sued in the Southern District on a civil case. I know what's going on. I'm following the case. It's a money laundering case. In fact, the plaintiffs that allege he stole hundreds of millions of dollars, they, they're suing him, Felix Sater. And the plaintiffs have said, and I, uh, and I have the documents, you know, this is really, this is really a money, this is really a criminal money laundering case. Yes, it is. But Felix Sater is not, has never been indicted. He never will be because of what he did while he was working for our government. He committed crimes on their watch. So this is how bad it is. This is why, from the very beginning, Donald Trump has always loved Putin, because Putin and his cronies had sent to him the Trump Organization and Bayrock LLC a billion dollars. Wouldn't you like a guy to send you a billion dollars? Wouldn't you be friends with him? Wouldn't you say, oh, he's a really smart guy? Of course you would. That's not good for us, though. It's not good for us to have someone that tied up with Russian money and the Russian government. It's not for us. He's the Russian candidate. Get it through your heads. He is the Russian candidate. He's as bad as we can get. And we got him. And a lot of people, presum presumably smart people, high up, they let this happen on their watch. And so far, we can't do anything about it. I have been silent. This is the only way I could speak out. I am silent. Joe Giannini, that Marine, that lawyer, nobody's talking to me. Nobody wants to talk to me because nobody can handle the truth. And they're not going to destroy me. And they already have destroyed some of my friends. Uh, all right. I'm not going to let this go. This is going to go out on YouTube. And I will send this show to everyone, all the judges, to Mueller, to Andrew Weissman. He's a traitor. Andrew Weissman is a traitor. Mueller is a traitor. 